On today's show, we again go back into the Speedweek archives and wind back to 2003. We head to Premier Speedway in Warrnambool, Victoria, where we look back on highlights of one of Australia's premier sprint car events, the Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic. Then we wind forward a year to 2004 and head to Sydney Dragway, where we look back on all the nitro and methanol burning quarter mile warfare from the Andrew Nitro Champs, featuring top fuel and top alcohol. This is Speedway. Track Cowboys Track Cowboys Much like it Outlaws This ain't no Hollywood Star Wars It's a brand deal of a deal Dirt Track Cowboys Well, have a look at the cars in the pit area. They're all here. Some performance equipment. There's the Monty Motorsports team. And have a look at this for trying conditions. This is the inside concrete gutter. The Premier Speedway Club, they're trying absolutely everything in their power to get this race spinning in. Anywhere else, this will be a washout. Not so warnable. Look at the crowd. It's been bucketing down. They're still there in numbers. They're getting out the heavy equipment here. Some of the Clifford Excavation vehicles. The big cat doing its job. We're remarkably going racing. As you can see, they're pretty hardy here. There is not a tarpaulin to be bought in Warrnambool. Home hardware, absolutely everything. They're all out. Let's take a look at your heat race. Grid, Ron Dalton and Jeff Judd on the front row. Ken Satori and Grant Anderson. Darren Maggs and Troy Little. Adrian Ma, Robbie Farr and Brad Furr. We are green. Can you believe it? Look at the weather and we're still going racing. Judd leads away as they squeeze up against our wall cam. Beautiful. The sun's even shining in the background. Remarkable. Judd to lead from Ronnie Dalton as Ken Satori takes off after a minute. Highway Hawley as Maxim. A little bit further back to Ma, who's been pretty stout this weekend, considering his lack of experience around this circuit. Ronnie Dalton doing a good job in the Avenger to hold out a pair of Maxims in Ken Satori and Darren Maggs. Troy Little just squeezing by then. And also Robbie Farr. Satori sandwiched in the middle here with a couple of Victorians just coming off his World Series rookie debut. Maggs takes him on. A lot more experience around this place. And Satori who loops it. Farr's got nowhere to go. And upside down goes the PWR Avenger. Well, that was an awkward rollover to say the least. The wing has exploded. Satori just gets in a little hot up high. Car turns. Grant Anderson, who did to miss far, tags him at an awkward point there and looks to be a relatively harmless crash. Has done some damage. It comes down ooh, really hard there. That's sometimes the one that tends to hurt your back a little. Back at the restart. Jeff Judd in the Auto Pro number 11 car to lead away. Oh, Mags, big slide jump on the bottom. Gets by Dalton. To the King's Fiberglass, number seven of Darren Maggs going forward. Backed by King's Fiberglass and Adelaide Truck refinishes for a couple of seasons now. Maggs, he's in the second spot. Dalton in third. Ma back in the fourth spot. Anderson, Burr, Troy Little. Satori has had to go to the rear. There's the Bevelite Glass, number 10. Smith's engine research entry of Adrian Ma out of Stanhope Gardens in New South Wales. Satori running at the tail now, but Jeff Judd all the way and doing a heck of a job for the Garden State. Ma comes up behind Ronnie Dalton trying to make some work as they come to the main straightaway. Ma glued to the tail as we head down this main straightaway. Our wall cam picking up all the shots. Dalton just ahead of Ma and Grant Anderson, second generation racer, starting to make some progress as Burr closes in on him now. Back to Little and Satori. And Dalton put together a really good drive. Not a real big budget deal for Ronnie, but he loves to go racing. Known as Rotten Ronnie, in his own words. You can tell what our leader is absolutely bolted. Jeff Judd. Anderson taking on Ma. There's only a lap to go. 
And it's been all one-way traffic for Jeff Judd as they come out of turn number four. Burr working Anderson over big time, but it's all the way for Jeff Judd in car number 11. Checkered flag is out. He takes the win. Mags close right in on him, actually. Ronnie Dalton back in third. Look at the clay that's built up over our wall cam. Not surprised with the amount of dirt and heavy rain we've had. And there is Judd. It's coming across here. The car is slowing up. And that's a bit of a shame because he was flying the GB Highway Auto Sales number 11 Avenger. Hope there's no problem with the motor. Let's take a look back here. Here is Satori getting in a little too hot in one. Far nowhere to go. Drills him and upside down goes the number two. Could have some ramifications later. Drama in the opening heat. They say red sky at night, sailor's delight. Isn't that spectacular? But it's not Cricky's delight. Here is the PWR car. There's a fair bit of damage to this car, and more so, there's some damage to Robbie Farr as well. Well, Shane Cricky, we saw the, we've seen the aftermath here of that horrific accident. How is Robbie? I think he's going to be OK. He's just sort of jarred his back around a little bit. I think the car came down fairly heavily, and, and he did hit the car, the car pretty hard. So I'm sure it'll be all right. I mean, anybody that knows him knows he's a tough character, so for him to say he's hurt, he's pretty hurt. But, look, he'll be back here soon. I'm sure he'll break out of hospital, and he'll be back trying to find out who's winning the races. Well, you just got to get it done every time your car hits the racetrack. You must be going forward. It is, in fact, the classic after all, the standard. Great newspaper, without doubt, hugely supportive of Australian sprint car racing and well done to all the teams. We take a look at your grid now. Mark Smith and Phil Johnson, Clay Lannery and Skip Jackson, Jamie Mayolo and Danny Smith, Mike Van Bremen, Gary Brazier and Joey Saldana. If you came looking for an easy heat, you're at the wrong place, buddy. How tough is this one going to be? Watch for Brazier, watch for Saldana as we go green. Great start for the Larrikin. Phil Johnson in the KFC car, he storms away. Well, Brazier around the top side of Mark Smith. Lannery down the top side working on Mark Smith. He rides a wheel. Oh, a frightening wreck into turn three for Clay Lannery. And I think Smith may have gone upside down as a result of it as well. Oh, there's the upright wing scar. Major carnage here at the Classic in turn three. Lannery just seemed to hop over the wheel. Let's have a look at it. Lannery in the fluoro yellow car climbs over the front wheel. It flips Smith's car and Lannery Heads off on a wild barrage of flips, smashes the safety fence. The Gordon McDonald, number 88 car, lying in ruins up against the wall. Now, Mark Smith is OK. He's climbing out of the car. He looks pretty well sure of himself, but here's the concern right here. The crash crew, along with New South Wales paramedic, NASA paramedic, David Higgins. They're very concerned about Clay Lannery's back here, a suspected back injury for him, so they're taking all sorts of precautions, lying the car very gently back on its wheels. They have to remove the top wing so that they can get him out through the top of the car. Here's a look at it again in super slow motion. Now, Smith gets in the corner. He's not really doing anything wrong here. I think Lannery just makes a slight miscalculation on their closing speed. Smith starts to flip. Lannery gets over onto the left rear, and away it goes. That's, I think, what might have hurt right there, the, the way the car pulled up in a quick hurry and then slams down back to the track. Panther Neon, number 88, really good young guy, Clay Lannery, out of the Wollongong area, come out of the leader car ranks, into the sprinters, they're a budget deal, they had a big tear up at Mount Gambier as well, they fixed the car, came back out, and this is not a great reward for him. There is David Higgins, the paramedic, in the middle of your shot with the short, dark, curly hair, he's played an instrumental role here, along with the great Warner Book crash crew. Clay is all right, suspected back injury, we'll give you an update on him later on as we go green at the restart now. Johnson the lead away from Jamie Mayola, who's come up track and shifts the KFC car out of the way. Says, get your drumstick and your nuggets, get out of my way. Around the top side comes Gary Brazier. So Braz making his way forward, three wide off turn four, goes by Smith and Saldana at the tail. So Bill Johnson, the KFC car, the man who has a lot to do with actually uh, doing the maintenance around this speedway and building a lot of the improvements. And there have been some amazing improvements to the Premier Speedway over the last six months. Brazier hunting now for Mike Brad Bremen's spot in the number six car as they go into turn three. Brazier, no fear at all, runs back to the top side, hunting for that number six. The DNF Racing Products Boster. Here is Jono, meanwhile. Got the KFC car wound up as he comes back to the main straightaway in second. One of the likeable larrikins of the game. Skip Jackson's starting to close in. You can see the track is still pretty fresh. And let me tell you, that is not surprising. It's rained since last night. 
and basically all day. Maolo out in front by a country Maolo, you might say. The EDP packaging systems, Ozquip Industries Eagle being crewed by Steve Melville and also by the moth Tim Gleason, who grew up in this area and word would have it, he's pretty keen to live back there at some stage in his life. Skip Jackson trying to run him down, the brakes glowing red hot on that Metal Corp, Gibson Freight, EWT, Avenger. Skip starts to close in on Johnson. Back to Danny Smith, Gary Brazier, and Joey Saldana. Talk about a talented little trio back there. And Jono's got a bit of a handful of this car. It's very tight, but it's still working well. Having said that, Skip Jackson starting to home in on him now. Here comes Jono getting some good TV time. A real character, this guy. Loves to get right into his racing. There's only one lap to go. And Jamie Mayolo out of mile up in Western Australia, doing a blinder of a job as he comes off turn four to wrap up the heat race. Big drive from the 99 car. Long way back to second. It should be Phil Johnson hanging on just over Skip Jackson. Back to Danny Smith, Gary Brazier, Joey Saldana, and Mike Van Bremen. So Jono wipes the visor clear. He really didn't get much of a look at Jamie Mayolo. He took off and ran. There he is, the young fella out of my lap, which is about, a, about half an hour north of Bunbury. We take a look at here at Lannery's spectacular ride. This is just frightening. Into the fence, hard. Massive impact. Word coming through now that Clay is in fact okay, but going to hospital for observation. I have no idea. He'll be back out racing at some point soon. Mayolo, great win. <laughs> More heat race action right now, and a couple of Davids on the front row. A couple of Victorian Davids, two David Swain on the pole, and David Bajilt, the Ford guy, and the Paslow Ford-sponsored Ford-powered sprinter, lines up alongside a man and some heavy hitters in this one. Peter Murphy and Mark Reuter on the second row behind Swain and Bajilt, and Daryl Wright, Brooke Tatmore, David Murcott, and Max Dumsney. Max will be carrying our onboard camera for this particular heat race. And there is the Ford guy on the outside, and the camera down auto sales. Hounds Pet Treats number 20. How can you ever get a sponsor name like that one? Away we go. Swain is hungry for a win. Let's see whether he can let the dog off the leash and get one. Murphy had a look up the inside. Wow, Machilton took off. Tadno on the high side now. Right to through on the bottom. And Peter Murphy trying to go forward in that National Truck Repairs number 13 BC Motorsports car. Oh, nice run for Murcott. The Access Safety Services. Hydra Steer number... 71 cool car. There's another cool chassis, man. They are everywhere. The ROH wheels entry of Mark Reuter up behind Swain. But Jilton has just took off like a scalded cat. Obviously, horsepower, not a huge big thing here. And Jilton does a very good job with what he has. Down on cubes to the rest of the field as they come off turn four. Swain leading this little bunch. This is the battle for second, third, and fourth. Sparks off the Murcott car as we go on board with Max. The Valvoline, Isuzu, number one is Peter Murphy. Runs him in deep, coming off turn two. Here comes the BC Motorsports car. Dumpty, you can see, trying to attack Brooke Tatnell. At the same time, not leave the door open for Peter Murphy. Great onboard picks. We'll get more of them later on. In fact, we've got them now. Out of this turn. Out of turn four, down the main straightaway. Dumpty working his beloved Premier Speedway. Look at Murphy. Oh, up the inside. Did he get him on the bottom side? Tatnell, he's busy trying to work the car in front of him. Max goes back a spot. So Peter Murphy gets by him. They're all down the bottom. Crack is still a little fresh at this point. If you're just joining us, it has poured with rain all day. And remarkably, you can see all the blue tarpaulins through the crowd. The crowd is stuck with this meeting. And they're here to see a classic decided. Peter Murphy now up behind Brooke Tannell, the Shell Helix, Zip Chrome Tools, Maxim. Gee, look at Murphy. Right on the bottom. Oh, Brooke coming off the turn. Got a good bite. Goes by Murcott. Murphy had a look for the air. Smirkot not going to fall for that one. Oh, Brooke to the top side on Reuter now. Two cars in three quarters of a lap. Now Shell Helix car is going forward. Oh, Reuter! Mark Reuter unexpectedly just flips going into turn one. Now look at the tyre on that right rear. It's come right off the rim as we take a look at this in slow motion. It looked like the wheel, almost like the tyre spun on the wheel or something. The V-lock that goes around that rim that holds the tyre onto the wheel. Looks like it may have come loose on that car and just sheared off. Reuter, here's a super slow-mo look at it. Watch the right rear. It's almost like the tyre spins on the wheel and then, man, he's just hanging on for the ride. That is a freakish incident. South Aussie goes upside down in turn one. Watch for the mud eater off his helmet. 
fling out the back there. Wow, oh, you see it laying on the track? That's actually the apparatus that cleans new tear-offs onto the helmet. So Reuter, some would say unlucky, some would say he should go out and buy a lottery ticket. That could have been worse. The Ford guys currently leading David McJordan. He would have been disappointed to see the Reds come on. As he was flying in that Paslow Ford Toyminator, as he calls it. Back in second, it's David Swain. Look for Tattnall. He won't be happy sitting in third at all. And right behind him then was Murcott. Brook to the high side. Here comes the Shell Helix number eight to the top side. Out of turn four. Folks, that's how you win two classics right there. And four World Series championships. One lap to go. Timing, they say, is everything. Oh, Majilton will be filthy. Great drive to tackle. He wins by the length of the main straightaway. But Jilt, the Ford guy, has got to be happy with that. Dumpty got up to get third, I think. Back to Swain, Murcott, Peter Murphy and Daryl Wright. Tattnall in a mean mood in car number eight. Murphy's feeling good. Flashback here. Here's a look at Max Dumpty out the back. Gee, that's how close they come to the witches' hats there. Real pressure from Peter Murphy. That's Daryl Wright in behind Murphy there as well. And Murcott, he gets eaten up there. The Ranbill front wing right up behind Max. Gee, it's frantic, isn't it? Murphy all over the tail of Murcott. Great pictures from our onboards of the Valvoline, number one. And you make one mistake. Oh, there goes Swain. And you get eaten alive, as David Swain can attest there. Here comes Murky. He makes Swain pay. Good stuff, isn't it? On board with Max Dumsey. Here's the winning pass from Brooke Tattnall. He's in fine form, that man from San Susi. Brooke, you were awesome in that heat race. On fire and round the outside, it worked for you. Yeah, they said this is Warning Bull of old, so I thought I'd better drive like I used to, and that was pet pedal down and get up around the outside. You know, I've sort of let these guys down this year, and I had to make amends. It was pretty good that the, gre the bottom was still greasy, that uh, a few of those guys w didn't take the chance of moving up high. The red definitely helped us. I was a little tight up there. We'd been battling away, battling away, battling away, but the, red, the yellow and the red definitely helped us. Everywhere you look, it's a different matchup, and it is fast cars trying to come from the back of the field. This one will be no different. Kerry Madsen and Brad Burr, a couple of big names who are going to try and search for a way forward on this super fast racetrack. John Bogles and Ron Dalton share the front row with Daryl Hodges and Ken Centauri, three and four respectively. Back to Andrew Shirley, Darren Maggs, Kerry Madsen, Adrian Ma, and Brad Burr. Ma put in a blinder of a time trial. He's looked very good all weekend. The young Sydney side are hoping to go forward as we go green. And Vogels, oh, Hodges! How lucky was Daryl Hodges then not to go upside down? That could have been nasty. John Vogels, your leader in the Graham's Clinic Supplies car, but the yellows come on. That was very lucky indeed. Hodgie got right up on the left rear, and as we saw earlier on with Clay Lannery, that happens, you can flip wildly. There is the T to Green Learning School number five. He's looking at it again. You see here, it's Mags gets a really good run across the front here and just turns right in on Hodges. I don't know who's tapped behind, perhaps, or not, but with Burr, he was lucky too not to drill the wall. Those things can get nasty here at Warnable. The speed is ferocious. So away goes the total dairy service. Number 70 of Johnny Vogels. He cleans out. Right around the outside is Satori on Shirley. Make no mistake, they're doing well over 160 kilometers an hour around this place. The average is around 140. They come down the main straightaway. Fur to the top side. Madsen gets the bike fizz 29 up the inside there as well. Ken Satori in his second heat for the night. Listen, I just saw him back in the, in the background there. Jump on the brakes, the car turn right. And Satori works Dalton over. There is the brakes. Blowing all this white hot on the bike biz Yamaha, number 29 of Madsen. Dalton doing a good job back to Shirley Madsen, Burr, and Mags. It's Ken Satori out of Kenwick in WA, working Ronnie Dalton over out of Victoria. Certainly a contrasted racing experience. Ronnie, no spring chicken, but getting around him very nicely indeed. Shirley and Madsen got their dukes up at the moment. Shirley very much an improved racer, spending a lot of time at PCR. As you go into turn one and two, here comes Satori. Searching for a way to get some speed on Dalton. The track at this point is very fast in that you stand on the gas, if you're even a remotely good race car driver, you can hold your line and be an extremely big challenge to pass. And that's where everybody's at at the moment. Everybody is fast. Dalton, relishing his front row start, sitting in the second spot of Satori and Shirley. 
Johnny Vogels has cleared out. Shirley got a little bit high there in the Lucas Oil, number 95. He's had very good service from Lucas over the last few years, and he, in return, has offered good exposure in favour. Madsen closing in once more. Man, Dalton's glued to the bottom. He is not getting off there. And why would he? The fast way at the moment is down the bottom. One to go, and Johnny Vogels has cleared out. There he goes. He's half a lap clear almost. And Graham's cleaning supplies. Number 70 car comes off the straightaway. Checkered flag is out. John Vogels gets the win over Dalton. Should hang on and does over Satori. Back to Shirley, Madsen, Fur, Mags, Ma and Hodges. Johnny Vogels. Got to be happy with that. That's somewhat of an upset. As we take a look at some of these incidents here, Hodges cannot say enough how lucky that was. Here is Vogels on his winning way in the number 70 car. Nicely turned out. Only a low buck operation. He does the job. He'll be grinning from ear to ear in the pit area. Heat race action now, and it's all getting down to the business end of the deal. You must rake in as many points as you possibly can. If you don't, it'll be all the harder for you later in the evening. Up on the front row, the Ford guy finds himself again. David Majilton alongside Troy Shields. We're going to go back to Brooke Tatnell and Darren Jensen. Darren uh, is starting to position four. They have to work pretty hard here. Tunks also in this one. Likewise, Dumpty and Bell. There's some fast cars in this one. Majilton showed that if he gets a clean head, he can really run away. Shields in the DMH Warnable car gets around the outside, gets a good run. Jensen hooks it up high in the crest of car, but Tatnell searching to go forward. He's pumped up tonight. Look at that car working. We've got Alan Felsch working the spanners. Brooks' confidence soaring. And you can just, it's reflected in the way he's driving. Dumby coming after the car in front of him as they work their way in. It's Jensen and Max goes by. Carrying her on board for us. Thank you, Max. Jensen and that Questra Australia car forced to watch as Max drives away. Gee, you saw then Jensen just got up a little high and Max just ate up the ground to Majilton and drove away from DJ. So the Ford guy under some pressure now, likewise Joy Shields. The DMH car's got some main wing damage and Brooke looking to inflict another win on his rivals. They come back to the main straightaway. Look at Tatnell, hooks it up high. Gee, going forward. Confidence must be high. Jensen's come well back on Dumpty. Max going a little high there, gets by Majil. That's why he was up there. Jensen swapping to the bottom. Will he go with what Max did? Not at this point. Brooke leading comfortably now over Shields. In third, it's Dumpty. In fourth, it's Majil, the Ford guy. Paslow Ford car running very well indeed. Murray Swain, the team, must be very happy with what they're seeing, considering Majil giving away some cubes. That is for sure. Back out of turn number four, Jensen trying to close in on Majilton. Right on the top side, Tunks, the next one through. Oh, Jensen lost some ground again. Just coming off the turns, car seems to get a bit sideways and straight line speed. So very important here at Warnable. It's a momentum game. Back to the main straightaway. Max now working shields over. A couple of Warnable boys right there in stark contrast of experience. Brooke Tatnell is going to eat up the raceway and take the win of the Shell Helix car. Shields should be able to hold on and just does the job narrowly over Dumpty. We go back to Majilton, Jensen, Tunks and Bell. That man there is somewhat of a surprise packet. Bit of a look up to see where the main wing was set. Remember that set up, although I'm sure Alan Felsch has it stored in the memory books. You can see him working early, heading towards the front, going up to the top side on Majilton. Facing with enormous confidence at this point, Brooke, and I've got to tell you, when he's confident, there's few that can stand in the way. Just see everybody else down at the bottom. That clearly illustrates Tatnell is prepared to search for a different option. Here is Max Dumpty. This will give you a bit of a look at the pits at Warnable. Driving all the way in, there's the next heat about to go out. Past the pit stewards box, past all the teams. Monty Motorsports team, Brad Berg turns left here, heads back almost towards the gate, back to the track where his transporter is. Thanks for the tour, Max. Well, after the disappointment of last night's feature race, two heat wins now, will that be enough to put you back into the A-Main? Yeah, it puts us back about uh, outside front row, so um, not, not a bad comeback. There's plenty more to come up soon, so make sure you stay with us, folks, as the standard Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic hots up. Over her quickly, zero to 60, couldn't have run her memory, yeah, what I really need is an open. Keep on. 
your last chance now to get yourself into tonight's A main. You've got to work very hard indeed. Let me tell you, there's only two guys that go through. The first two cars across the line go into the back of tonight's championship race. And look at the field. It's absolutely packed here at Premier Speedway. They have had to close the gates. You can't fit another person inside. So once again, two years in a row, the classic sells out. What an event. This would be Danny Smith and Jeff Lees to share the front row as we get set to go green. Down the bottom side, Shirley got a bit of a look in. Lees went high. And as a result, we've got a car upside down big time. Daryl Wright from Murray Bridge. A lunar launch into turn one, smacks the wall hard. Main wing has exploded on that car. It's a hard impact here. The Murray Machining and Sheds, Caltex Haviland 28, laying on the track. Darrell had a, a really big wreck, not too dissimilar to that a couple of years ago at Warnable, same place. The first people over the scene was David Higgins, the paramedic, and he's now at the back of the car there with the green overalls on. And Darrell climbing out of the car himself. Let me tell you, a very nuggety competitor, very strong on the upper body. He's still running at his bell run, I'm pretty sure of that, but well, the guys are going hard. And that's what can happen. As we get set to go green once more, Danny Smith and Jeff Lease. Lease a whole lot better runner to turn one this time. So into one and two we go. Bali a little bit further back in here with Grant Anderson. There is Danny Smith seeking to make another classic main event appearance. Oh, there's someone flipping big time in three and four. It's Magilton. The Ford guys come unstuck. And here's a look at it. Just upside down, appeared to be on his own. Slams back to earth. Shame for him. He was at a pretty good classic. As we come back to another restart. Oh, what happened then? What was that Rankin? I think Tunks ran right into the back of him. Bags involved as well. They all managed to rejoin the track, but as a result of it, yeah, Grant Tunks has got front wing damage. Now, let me tell you, that is not what you need. That will be messing with your mind, something shocking in the next few laps. Have I broken a shock? Is there anything else wrong? Oh, Danny Smith got a pearl of a run. Least got spat out the back. Shirley got a really good start here. So, man, Least has been to the front, to the back, to the front. Now locked in the middle with all these restarts. As he gets up a little high, and Grant Anderson coming back at him in the beef growers number 37. Rankin! Oh, and Mags has gone as well. There's cars flipping everywhere. Bits of race car strewn all over the track. Rob Rankin bit one hard on the main straightaway. Now here is a look at it from the top. He just rode a wheel. I think it was Bali's car. In fact, it might have been a little bit further back in the order. The West Coast windows. Menzel Glass 99 just self-destructing into turn one. Here's where he, he makes contact right here and starts to flip. Remarkable the way it flipped onto the left front, went over that way. Mags runs over a wheel of Grant Tunks, and he goes to the wall and starts flipping, and here is the end of nice guy Rob Rankin's car. Oh, bits of the race car goes spewing off and actually hit Gary Rook's car then. The whole hub and front axle assembly breaking off that car. What a shame for Rankin, for the good guys of the sport. As we go green again, at least get some respite. It's remarkable how many times of good luck, bad luck story for him. He's now in second. Danny Smith has been the most consistent out of all of it. He's led every one of them. As we come off turn four, will we get a lap in? Looks like we may do this time. Shirley, Jim Bali, they're all up right up on the wall. A packed house here at the Classic, thanks to the standard. Jeff Lees from the 92.9, Shaq's Fremantle entry. Just over Andrew Shirley in third, back to Grant Anderson in the 37. Now bear in mind, only the first two cars across the line will go into tonight's A, and we got trouble again. Yellows are on. The car stuck up against the wall. It's Grant Tunks, the tool connection. RM Race Fuel's John Boy chassis. Grant has had a pretty ordinary run in the B main to date. Oh, right up on the wall was Gary Rook. Occasionally, someone gets brave enough to sneak up there. Danny Smith and the Flocon Engineering, Jim Knight, owned number 14, a Foster chassis. Danny was sitting at home in the snow, contemplating a year without having to go to Australia. Jim Knight rang and said, come on down and run my car, boy. So a wonderful gesture from the Knight family to put Danny in some very good equipment. Chad Kemenar normally in that car. Grant Anderson trying to close in on Shirley. Danny Smith is your leader. The man who's on the bubble at this point is Jeff Leesk. He must hold on to that spot or he's going to the 
basically the trailer, but you have to watch the classic as a spectator. Right at the moment, he's doing very well. The Jeff Kendrick tuned at number 92.9. They've got a very interesting way of washing the race car. It's got a quite an audience. Wherever they go, they wash that car and someone actually helps them out in a bikini. It's a very popular attraction, let me tell you. We're all hoping at least he gets the car dirty tonight. Shirley's still in third. Anderson, Bali, Jensen. I think that was Murphy then as well in all of that. Try and check our way through and see whether... Yes, it was. I'm not entirely unsure that Rankin didn't fight the right rear of Peter Murphy's car and start flipping. It may have been the cause of it. Danny Smith around the top side now. The Indiana veteran coming after Troy Shields, one of the quiet achievers. He sweeps high. Danny has moved up another half to a full car width above everybody else's racing line. Shields staying out of trouble. Down the bottom as Leask comes up behind him. Danny, a living legend of the sport, not only here in Australia, but certainly in America as well. As now we see Shirley starting to attack Jeff Leask. The Lucas Oils car starting to come on now. Leask confronted with a lap car in front. Shirley down the bottom. Leask has got to go high. He does. They go three wide at a turn two, but Shirley, he is now in the transfer, and Leask loses a lot of momentum. Oh, Bali got a huge bite. Got some great traction, ran straight into the side of Anderson. Now Shields trying to slow up. He got caught in behind Anderson. Something has collapsed in the suspension, the left rear there. The car is chassis laying right over the left rear wheel. Here is where Lee gets a car unsettled, moves up track. Anderson has to pitch the car sideways. Watch Bali. He gets a great run off the bottom. And Anderson's trying to come back to the line. It's two guys going to the same spot. And they've unfortunately met this contact. It's taken both cars out. There is Bali's Metal Court Recyclers, Fuchsia's Racing Oil 61. Shame, it's a really good looking car. Likewise, Grant Anderson, who's turned into quite a talented youngster. Back at the restart now, still only two cars to go forward. Least gets his spot back. So that was the only fortunate part of that whole situation. Oh no, he's gone back again. Least has lost two spots. Shirley is now through. Jensen goes through his reserve at this point. And Gary Rook. And the Oak Flat Motors 42 Cool goes by Leask. And now fellow West Aussie Ken Satori is taking him on. So Leask must be feeling very lonely indeed. He's gone from what was almost a certain transfer back to three or four spots down. And Satori looking real racy. So I think either Leask has a problem with confidence in racing lines or there's a problem with that 92.9 car. Very professional operation out of WA. Andrew Shirley not content with just hanging on for a second. He wants the race win here. These guys are both clear out enough that they can just coast around and hang on and make the transfer. But bear in mind, Andrew Shirley wouldn't know that. He wouldn't know how far back these guys are. And Danny Smith is going to race for the win regardless. Shirley right behind him once more. Danny gets a good run off turn two there. Open up a bit of ground over Shirley. So Andrew can probably sit there and just do the job wants the win that's pretty well obvious they go back into turn one and two once more Shirley hooks in a little bit higher then comes down low off the turn as he comes after Danny Smith in the float on 14. you have to think Smith has got enough of the tank for this point here wouldn't you how bad does Shirley really want it do you want to risk tearing up the car or you want to just sit back and consolidate the spot the Merv tenant painting back number 95 to the main straightaway with laps starting to really tick by here and Shirley well, it's obvious. He wants to race for this thing. There's only a lap and a half to go. And he's coming right after Danny Smith. They come up with a lap car of Shields. One to go. Danny Smith, your leader. Shirley right there with him. The Queenslander gets a good run off the turn. Oh, a clash of wheels. Well, that could have really come unstuck. They come out of turn four. Shirley will get the win. Smith gets second. How bad do you want it? Jensen in third. Well, it's all on here at the Classic. Crowd are loving this. There is Johnny Vogels in the number 70 car. I've got to tell you, off camera, Danny Smith has delivered a bit of a blow to Andrew Shirley. Shells, the big Queenslanders, none too happy with it. And these two guys are hot under the collar. They go back to the pits. Smith gave it to Shirley after the yellows. Shirley has basically reciprocated the hospitality. So head back to the pit area. It's frantic. Ooh, this has livened up the show. Well, Daryl Wright crashes out spectacularly. That was the start of it. There were some serious crashes here. Rankin goes big time to the right of our camera. Mag splits there. Rankin, just a frightening crash into turn one. Bits and pieces of the car. Now here's the move that has angered 
Well, both these guys, really. We're going to go on the pitch and catch up with them and catch each's perspective on it. There is the town tank. You can see where Danny Smith left the love bite after the race. Let's catch up with both of them. That's what they think. Well, Andrew Shirley, winner of the B Main there. There was a bit of feeling in that between yourself and Danny Smith. Yeah, there was. I mean, Danny, Danny was good at the start, but he seemed like he slowed a little bit. I lost a little bit of ground there at the end. And then caught him back up. I think he got tired. I mean, I guess that's a part of getting old, and he doesn't like it. So, um, But anyway, we got the job done. We won the B. We moved on to the A. All we got to do is go forwards from there now. There's obviously some damage to the fuel tank caused by that little love tap, I guess, at the end from Danny Smith. Will you be able to race with the tank like as is? Yeah, it should be right. We'll fuel it up. I mean, it's got a bladder inside that, so it shouldn't be a drama. So we'll fuel it up and go out and run that own, see what happens. Hopefully we'll put the Lucas Oils Maxim up the front. Good job. Thank you. main thing about B-Main was to get in the show, and Andrew had his head up his ass for the last couple of laps. All we had to do was finish one, two. It didn't matter where we finished. About took us both out, so I'm just glad he didn't, and uh, we're starting at the back, and it's going to be tough to pass. We're just going to have to hang on and finish. Well, this is it, folks. Your $20,000 to win the standard Grand Annual Sprint Car Classic. The standard, for those people who haven't been to Victoria, is the Warnable newspaper. And let me tell you, they support this sport like you wouldn't believe. Big, multiple, full-color page editorials. And look at the crowd. It's capacity. They've had to turn people away. Look at them. They're jammed in. It's four wide, and the atmosphere is electric. We've gone four wide to salute the fans. There is a stack of American superstars battling with our Aussies. That's what the Classic has become. The Kelly OEM Challenge as well has added a new dimension to it. Dundee Tatnell, Saldana for shots, Madsen Burkott, Pittman, the who's who, and we're gonna be on board with Max Dundee in at Valvoline number one. Some awesome pictures coming up. Let's take a look at your grid now. Dundee and Fur will share the front row. Tatnell and Saldana, Schatz and Pittman, Madsen and Murcott, Brazier and Ma, Lewis Van Bremen, Bell Little, Mayolo Green, and our two transfers, Shirley and Smith, have dusted the dirt off each other's suits, and they're ready to come back out and get it on. 40 laps. And just think, those guys in the B just did 20 just then, so it'll be a 60 lap affair for Danny Smith and Andrew Shirley. As we're gonna look back from the pole sitter, Max Dumpty, let me tell you, when, we, when it was read out that Dumpty was on pole, this place went absolutely bereft. They would love nothing more than Dumpty to claim a classic. Last year he ran second to Donnie Shots, and it was by the barest of margins. Brad Furr has a lot to prove here, the Samina number two. Joey Saldana has not missed a main event win since he's been here, apart from the preliminary last night. We are green at the classic. Green on the top wing of Fur. And green of the classic as Fur gets the lead. Round the top side comes Saldana. Oh, Fur digs in. Look at Joey Saldana. Mid track, that thing is glued to the track. He heads off after Dumpty Scalp. The tight number 17. Remember, this is Trevor Green's spare car. Look at the way it's being wheeled around this circuit. Dumpty goes back to third. The American onslaught is on in earnest. Uncle Sam. Serving up a double whammy to Australia here at the moment. Fur, your leader from Saldana. Back to Dumpty, back to Tattnall. Brook has been fired up. Shots, Pittman, Murkoff, Brazier. I think Lewis, the next one through as well. So Ian Lewis having a pretty good run as they come back to the flag stand. Donnie Shots, don't expect much from him early. We never do. But as they start to get cranking around lap 33, 34, you're going to bet if he's got anything in the tank, he'll be showing it. Tumpty comes back on Saldana now. The number one car closing in on Joey. They head down the back straight. Saldana keeping the car very straight indeed. Third down the bottom, Saldana, another car with higher. Look at this, Saldana, your leader. Fur trying to challenge back on the bottom side, but Saldana getting away. And Fur lost a lot of momentum going into three. Dumpty, too happy to take the spot away. Gee, they lap Danny Smith inside six laps. Let's take a look at Max Dumpty's perspective. Looking out the back at the start, you see Tattle down the bottom. Saldana flies around the top side. Brook runs pretty well wheel to wheel with him down the back, shooting as they go into three. It's like a high speed pace lap, isn't it? Saldana off to the left. Gee, thank goodness they don't have mirrors. That'd have to be a bit disconcerting if you could see what was going on behind you. 
Saldana, your leader, folks. The standard Grand Annual Classic from Warnable. Tattle very high, allowing shots. A bit of a look-see up behind the seat on Max Dumsey's car. You can just see our onboard camera. Coming up to lap Mayolo now. He's done out of around about position 15 in tonight's main. Joey looking to win another main event. He's been unstoppable in Sydney. You can see Burr closing back in on Max now. Dumsey to the high side on Mayola, gets by cleanly. It's Malvaline, GKR Transport number one. Trevor Green is the next one to go and lap down. It's been a pretty tough classic for him, but he'd be happy to see Saldana go by in the car he owns. Dumsey, who knows this place like the back of his hand, has the entire crowd on his shoulders. As he said earlier, he was hoping that the crowd were in the car driving with him. Well, they might be pushing him along. Trevor Green, a lap down on Saldana. Max can't quite get by. Got to be careful, because Brooke Tattel is right there. Brooke closing in. Dumpty now goes by Trevor Green on the high side. And Saldana is picking him up and putting him down in style, isn't he? Comes up behind Andrew Shirley now. Shirley trying to race for position with Mike Van Bremen. Huge crowd. They are jammed in here. I would think almost 11,000 people. This new spectator area in front of the pit area has turned out very nicely. And they're jammed in there as well. Oh, Brad Burr! Huge crash in turn two. The San Mina number two car. And look how windy it must be down there. The way that steam is pouring out of the car. Now, Dumpty coming in. Stephen Bell is already there. Crews will make whatever changes they can. Let's have a look here. One bounce, two bounces, and then bam, it digs in and away it goes. Just look at the steam pouring off that car. And Brad Burt, a spectacular end. He's been just flying. Back on board with Dumpty now. Tattle glued to his tail as they go by the witch's hat. Brooke going to the high groove. Dumpty now to the bottom. And your leader. Joey Saldana out of Brownsburg, Indiana. What a racing state Indiana has been. Of course, it's where Tony Stewart hails the current Wisdom Cup champion from a little place called Rushville, Indiana. Pittsburgh, Indiana is basically named after Jeff Gordon. They call it his town these days. There's a lot of great talent has come out of Indiana. They work their way down this main straightaway. The lap cars getting a reprieve, but only briefly. Off the back of the number one car once more. Oh, he got a bike and Tattle got him on the bottom. So Max is going to have to work very hard now. Brook Tattle coming forward. Oh, the yellows are on. It's Lewis in the 18 radium lighting Australian J and J. Well, I tell you, he won't be happy about that. Brook Tattle, Shell Hill is number eight, had just made a critical pass on Dumpty. Dumpty had biked up. You saw the camera. Sort of jumping in the air, the car got all unsettled and Brooke went straight by on the bottom. We still have something like five Americans in the top seven at this point. And importantly, the one who's leading is an American, that's for sure, Joey Saldana. Frazier coming on now, working the top side on Adrian Ma. Here comes Gary Brazier. Saldana on the bottom. Braz right upstairs. They come off turn four. Ma slips back on the spot. It's been very racy. Max, what can he do? He's got a lot of work ahead of him. He closed right in on Donnie's shots at this event last year. Donnie has yet to show his hand. Neither has Pittman. It's been a case of sit down, try to stay on the pace, hope you've got something for them late. And they come up on Danny Smith now. Now Saldana's got a good lead. Laps are starting to get by, but there's still plenty of time for someone to make a run if Saldana gets held up. The way he's driving, that wouldn't be foreseeable. Smith moves up into the groove a little bit. Saldana has to reassess and drop to the bottom. Dumpty gets a chance to close in. Track is holding up pretty nicely. It's had plenty of moisture in it, that is for sure. Saldana now. Gee, when he gets some clear air, he just breaks away, doesn't he? Look at the ground, he's opened up. Tattnall still in third. Shot still in fourth. Pittman in the fifth spot. Murcott has been rock solid as well. That number one. Screwed by Mouse Green. Wonder if they're going to be able to do anything to make this thing work. Freddie Walsh and the boys down in Cobden looking after this guy, Joey Saldana's car. Van Bremen, the next one on the list. 
see them all down the bottom in turn three and four. Nobody wants to chance their hand and go too high. Shot still yet to come on. Brazier infield. So Brazier pulls the Castrol medal called Curry and Tattnall. Blue to the tail of Dumsby. Oh, the slide job. Will it work? No. Dumsby gets a good bite off the top. Well, at the moment, the highlight's a place to be. I think Brooklyn had to shut down a little because Dumpty got the top side on Van Bremen. So Shots is coming on. Oh, what a race. The classic. Appropriately named, isn't it? Shots coming after Tattnall now. The Miracle Recreation Equipment J&J. Oh, look at Joey. Straight through the bottom of Troy Little. And Barry Smith, I assume his car goes a lap down. And importantly, it puts a lap car between Dumpty and Joey. Look at the lead, Saldana's got up his sleeve now as we go on board with Max and have a listen here as well. Brooke getting held up just a touch there by Little as he attempted the outside sweeper. Gotta love the sound of a number one car on the gas as it carries her on board. Tattnall got the main wing set fairly high on the Maxim this year. Running around in the top three position would love to be a winner of the Classic. The 20 grand would come in handy to every one of these teams. Shirley, who came out of the B main in rather controversial circumstances in the end, obviously enjoyed a bit of Bippo because he had plenty to say in the pit area. Pittman has not yet come on in that time garage is number 36. Leno will be wondering what he can do with the car if there's a stoppage just to give it that edge. Stephen Bell has been coming on though. The speed flow number six car. Bill Man performance, oh, so car. Oh, Andrew Shirley flips the Lucas. Oh, it's Maxim in turn three and four. Pops the visor up very early. Got a bit of damage, he's shortened the car up. So he's got a very short wheelbase now, but uh, just the snout and the tail tag have been shortened up. As we look at this one more time, got a bit of height. Flames belching out of the exhaust. And uh, Shirls takes an unexpected ride and bolts him out of the classic. He climbs out, really tough customer. Handles that pretty well. Quick wave to the fans, he's always good for that. Now here's drama. Joey Saldana has a flat right rear tire. It's got a hole in it and it's starting to go down. You can see Trevor Green kneeling at the tire. They can't replace the tire, they had to plug it. If you replace the tire, you go to the rear. And Max praying that all they had in their pocket was a piece of chewing gum. Away we go. The tyre has been repaired. Dumpy in second, Tattnall in third. Shots in fourth. There's not many laps to go in this one. And Saldana now has to fight off the, I guess, the urge to slow up and look up that tyre. Tattnall coming right at Max. Dumpy, he's down the bottom. Saldana's on the high side. Brooke is also up there on the high groove as this tight garage is number 17. Storms away at the restart again. Tattnall, shots, Pittman, back to Murcott. What's he going to do? The affable Aussie champ who walks on water around these parts. Almost had to today with the rain that was pouring in. Max gets a good bite on the bottom just there. Saldana, conscious he's got to keep the tyre. Plenty of heat in it. Keep it pumped right up just by running laps. And he's really got to forget about it and just go hard. Pittman still yet to close right in. Saldana, who's dominated Parramatta and his experiences there, including the 50 grand to win show, now under pressure from Max. Dumpty closing in just like he did last year. The crowd sensing that maybe, maybe there's something special around the corner here. Certainly anything can happen. There's only two laps to go. A crucial move from Saldana. He gets by Mayolo. Dumpty hauling him in. What a finish this will be. One to go. Saldana on the ropes. Dumpty closing in. What a race. Saldana pitches the corner off. Half a lap to go to hold on to $20,000. Saldana wins just over Dumpty. Back to Tattnall. Shots. Pittman, the next one through. Murcott and Adrian Maher. What a nail-biting finish. Saldana holds on. Two deflating tyres in the end. Dumpty threw everything at him. But in the end, Joey Saldana wins the Classic and Uncle Sam's winning streak continues. Well, congratulations, Joey Saldana. It's been a very successful tour down under this season. Yes, it's uh, definitely. I've never expected this. Um, I got to thank Trevor Green and uh, Brian Healy with Parramatta Speedway. They did an excellent job preparing this car and getting it ready for us. And uh, to have somebody just jump in it and run as good as we have, that's a credit to the team and the Walsh guys. So. Uh, 
I'm just here having fun, and luckily we didn't crash tonight because uh, the track was very demanding, and we got a good run there early and got to the lead and uh, held on there. I had a flat there at the end, so I was pretty lucky to finish. Yeah, of course, a flat tyre with eight laps to go. What was going through your mind on that uh, last restart? Uh, actually, the, as demanding as the track is, I was just pumped up wanting to race the racetrack. I wasn't really thinking about tyres or nothing, so... Uh, you know, I was just running as hard as I could. I mean, I knew I was in trouble there at the end there because I couldn't go around and come off the corners very good because my tire going flat. But we held on. We won the race. It's over. I can go home, and that's, everything's great. Yeah, it was close. I um, tried all I could. Joe's just too good. He's very good at it, and he does it year in, year out. I think he's, he's a brilliant driver to come here and have the record he has. I think he didn't... He didn't start a race, he didn't win, I don't think, in the features, So, um, except for last night. But um, main events, he's won about everything he's in, and congratulations to him, he's done a great job. Yeah, considering where we stood last night and where we've been all year, you know, we really have struggled this year. So, you know, I said to the crew, I said, I'm not quitting yet. I said, but, you know, if we get by Max, we, we may have something for Joey a little bit later in traffic. Um, but, you know, we couldn't get by Max. We got by him once the yellow came out. We just weren't good enough, you know, but I'm happy with tonight. You know, I walk away here knowing that we're fast. Once again, it's a classic race, and that's why it's so appropriately named. Well, they've come from all over the compass to win this. In the end, it was Joey Saldana who stood tall. Thank you to JJ Manee, to Brad Doty, to Brian Ingerson, and all the team down at Premier Speedway in Warrnambool. You know, they say you can't be in it for the money. You've got to satisfy your soul. But 20 grand does a whole lot of satisfying. Coming up after the break, we look back on the 2004 edition of the Andro Nitro Champs from Sydney Dragway, featuring top fuel and top alcohol. <laughs>